Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers for dog trainers or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. I want to I want to touch base on a subject now that we have you because I know you're you're running a little short on time, but I wanted to talk to you. So it's it's not not every guest is a specialist uh, in in the sense of like their main focus is rescue work, yeah. right? And I grew up working a lot with rescues. The reason I hope became a dog trainer in the first place, I was volunteering at the shelter for six, seven months yep. and it changed my whole life trajectory when I was 18, right? Yep. And so the, I want to really just dive into the rescue world a little bit with you because okay. a lot of dog trainers, you know, the, I think the most common question they get is like, how, how do I build up my business, right? And how, and the basic, basic advice is just, volunteer for rescues and train those dogs yes. mm -hmm. volunteer for rescues and train those dogs go to the shelters and train those dogs where however you can help a homeless animal or a dog in need even if you're just teaching a basic obedience it makes them more marketable to get adopted yeah. teach them how to loose leash walk at the shelters they'll get picked up quicker and these are all the things very similar to you watch caesar milan when i was a kid yeah. did all that shit at the shelter and when you're a young kid looking for a purpose and you see that you're effective at something yeah you're just like well, feels good it feels great yeah it feels great so talk to me a little bit about kind of the rescue world like what is okay it's a depending on which route you're gonna go in methodology mm -hmm. um it, it can be a very dangerous place for you mm -hmm. right I, I you know chad team floppy years has been mm -hmm. destroyed by by rescues right. and, and he's like the best guy you've ever met mm -hmm. right he, he's a bleeding heart for dogs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the the struggle is finding a rescue that has an open mind Mm -hmm. two different methodologies right right uh, i went through six different rescues where it was horrific mm. right and i finally found love pup and, and they were a little skeptical at first with my balanced approach but mm -hmm. when they started to see the changes that took place for their behavioral cases like mm -hmm. in 2020 i took in 24 rehabilitation cases to, wow. to rehabilitate all of them have been successfully placed and have not been returned. Wow. Right. That's, I mean, a hundred percent. That's, I, that's I mean, that's a hell of a way to start. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, 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 that's not going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, it's just not going to happen. But what you have to do is you have to find the rescue and you have to prove to them that you're going to show up, that you're not there for that five minute Instagram post. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. you ask love pup, you ask incredible Stella. There's tens of thousands of people that wish that they can volunteer for those places, right? But what happens over and over and over is we get people who come in, get their Instagram story, mm -hmm. and then they're out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to rescue or do you want to appear as if you want to rescue? Mm -hmm. That's the question, mm -hmm. right? It's, you know, coming in, even if it's once a week, is gonna do, like, you have to imagine these dogs you know, maybe in a rescue, their life might be a little bit better, mm -hmm. but these dogs have nothing. They're in a crate all day. And just by you showing up and hand feeding them, mm -hmm. you're giving, you're giving them some joy mm -hmm. just by taking them for a walk. You're giving them exposure, right? You're getting them ready for the next home. Mm -hmm. it, the struggle is that people are unwilling to sacrifice their precious time. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i you know when i first started off i didn't have social media mm -hmm. i only had it for two years right mm -hmm. but i didn't have social media i didn't have tv right i didn't waste my time doing nonsense mm -hmm. right i put all my energy into rescue i volunteered every single day mm -hmm. right without a doubt even though i was broke and i couldn't pay my bills i made it a point to rescue because i knew that's what was going to make me a better trainer right right what you have to do is you have to go in there and you have to show up. Talk is cheap. Talk mm -hmm. is cheap. You know, you could see a thousand trainers doing this, yep. right? Mm -hmm. You could see it all day. You could see this all day, but let's see it. Let's see the proof in the pudding. Yep. So what I, if you truly want to rescue and it's not for the weak hearted, it is not. There are, there are some things that happen that you don't want to hear about. There's things that happen that you don't want to see. There are dogs yeah. that have to be put down, but here's the thing. In those cases, you have to think, do you want that dog to be put down in this miserable state where it's just confused? Or do you want to stare in its eyes and give it love in those last few moments? It's heartbreaking. It, it kills your heart. But it's those moments 
that really help you understand what these dogs are up against, right? If you could bring a little joy to the, the lives of, of many, why not do it, right? Sacrifice, put it out, etch it out in your calendar that for the next six months, you're going to volunteer three times a week and show up. Don't let drinking at the bar get in the way. Don't let smoking pot get in the way, right? Don't let watching a stupid TV show get in the way. Make it a priority make it a priority in your life, make a promise to yourself and don't break this promise. Right. That's it's, you just got to show up. That's, they're just begging you to show up. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, that's a, that's a great advice because I think even from a experience development outside, like just developing experience, working with the same dog, you will only see how effective you are as a dog trainer by seeing consistent work with the dog. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of times, you know, like I have a couple of people that, that intern for me and they're actually having to borrow neighbor's dogs because they don't own their own pets, yep. right? And part of what we require is we want them to be able to go to rescues and shelters and volunteer, right? And my old company, we actually had relationships with several rescues where when we had interns in, they automatically went to those four or five rescues. That's the game. Dogs, trained those dogs. And that's simply just to gain experience, yes. right? And the interesting thing is those people who are interested in we live in a generation right now that if you do not give, you will not get, right? 100%. And there are some people out there who, you know, they will maybe want to do, you know, show up a couple times just to get their card on the, on the, yep. to get handed out, right? But the reality of it is the best business grower is word of mouth. And on top of that, yep. in order to get word of mouth, you actually have to show the results, right? Mm -hmm. Now, even if all you are good at is teaching the dog obedience or teaching the dog how to loose leash walk, or teaching the dog how to do some play stays or whatever it might be, do it. Because guess what? You know how many dogs go in and out of a rescue? You know how, how many rescues know other rescues who need dogs? Mm -hmm. And if you guys make yourself, and I think who taught this? I think this might have been Tony Robbins. Uh, proximity is power, right? And so if you're trying to develop a business, if you are at the same rescue over and over and over for weeks, for months, you are their number one trainer, mm -hmm. whether or not you are the best trainer. If you're the one that shows up, if you're the one with the passion, if you're the one with the commitment, you know, you will get the referral. You will get the referral. And that's the bottom line, right? So from a business standpoint, it helps you. From a skill development aspect, it's a, it's a huge, great piece of advice. Um, like I wouldn't be traveling the United States every week mm -hmm. if it wasn't for volunteering. Like yeah. straight up, mm -hmm. straight up. I would not be where I'm at today if it was not for my volunteer work. Well, and I think too, a big function of volunteering and showing up is it opens doors. Sorry, I think my girlfriend just got home. It, it opens doors that are indirect. So I almost look at things like uh, that old game hopscotch. It's like you get to this square, then you get to this square, then you get to, but you can't skip squares. You got to go from one to two to three, then you get to the double. And Brent's hundred percent right, which is part of why I know we both know people who, who have started their businesses by volunteering with rescues and offering like, like heavily discounted training or whatever the case to build some sort of notoriety and loyalty with them. Now they send them clients, like regular, you know, full price clients. But um, that, if that is the direct benefit, the indirect benefit is like rescue aside, the people you work with there aside, you know, there's someone who goes and adopts a dog on their own. They think that you're good and sweet, or because now you have a foster dog, you have, you're doing training with, you have uh, examples to put online for social media. And then somebody finds your Instagram page. Like there's all, that's another way in which momentum is just a very real thing. You know, the more, the busier you are, the busier you will be. And it's, it's as easy as like, I'm training a dog for someone in a wheelchair right now. So I push around in a wheelchair in, in stores to teach him to heal to it and not like, not get run over by it and, and not be in front of it and stuff like that. So I'm walking around or I'm, you know, rolling around with this dog in a wheelchair. And it's as simple as these ladies, you know, they see me, they talk to me one day, I come back the next day, they're, they're there too. And this time one wants a card and I think nothing of it. I'm like, Oh sure. You know? Um, and then she called me and then two days later, I have her dog here training. You know, it's, it's, it's easy. It's like, if you just get out there and just start, take a dog out there and start working, you'll find people, people are looking. And, and if you feel like, you know, if you're newer to the game, because like we talked about people, if they don't know what to do, they just don't do anything. Even as we're sitting here talking about it, somebody is like listening to this going, oh, that, that makes sense. And then they're just never going to go to a rescue. If, if it's something that's, 
intimidating because you don't think that you're that good or whatever the case, whatever knowledge you do currently have, whatever simple stuff you can currently teach, I guarantee you right now, there are dogs in the rescued nearest to you that could benefit from even that simple stuff yes. sits with food Touching lives, right? You know, Touching and, and lives. it is the simplest thing that could change a ridiculous amount. Like every dog trainer, I'm sure every dog trainer has had that story where it's like, oh man, the dog was easier than I thought. It was like, I taught him this, this, and this, and they totally transform in like two days. Yep. So there's a million of those dogs out there in rescues. And if you start with the most simple stuff like that, not only are you helping the dogs as you should be doing, but it's, it's still getting your foot in the door. Even if you're a very basic trainer, even if you have to offset for that somehow, I don't know, like, like less expensive lesson costs or something like, you know, there, you know, there's a market out there for all kinds of different stuff, right? There's Domino's and there's little Caesars. Right. So I just like, if you're just, just do it for free, just do no, it for free. Like, no, I, mean, I agree. And, and like, then you'll get, like you do it for free a couple of times, they're going to appreciate you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And just like you said, the whole, like if you look at my social media, the, when it blew up, mm -hmm. it's the rescue dogs that blew up. The difficult rescue dogs blew me up. It wasn't, it wasn't the dog I'm teaching sit to. Mm -hmm. It was the difficult rescue dogs that I was volunteering to save. Mm -hmm. I'm talking outside of volunteering. Oh, okay, okay. Like volunteering. Yeah, it's volunteering. It's free. Yes, right. Yes. But I'm talking about like, if you're a newer trainer, who's looking yes. to get better or looking to get clients, because these days, especially with COVID and everything, uh, everybody had that, like, I, I have to find clients. Like, you know, there's just, there's work out there, but I can't find it for whatever reason type thing. Right. Everybody had that struggle. Yeah. So yeah. there was two months that were rough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just the first two months, months, yeah. Yeah. Mark, first two months were, here. were super rough. Yeah. For me, anyway. And then it, <laughs> 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 like, People were like, oh, we're stuck at home. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I lost 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then it got super duper busy. I didn't know what to do yeah. with myself now. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is a fascinating sort of thing to where if you want to get better, go for, you know, and volunteer your time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about in your own private practice as a trainer. If you know that you're new or not as experienced or whatever, and you like offset for that by like, oh, well, my lesson costs less than the next guy or something. The more that you work with these dogs, even if it's simple stuff, it's, it's the more experience you have with that simple stuff will slowly push you out into more stuff. Like nobody learns, oh, yeah. nobody learns everything all at once. It's like, oh, I got good at sit with food. Oh, I can make the dog wait. Oh, I noticed if my hand placement is like this, I can make them wait a little longer. And you slowly get better with small mechanisms of learning. And that's when you can bump up your prices or whatever the case, not to mention because you've been volunteering you're in front of all these eyeballs. You're in front of all these people. You're networking with all these people who they network with their little network of people. And you're, you're totally establishing yourself and you have no idea. And I think one of the biggest tragedies of today with social media and everything, as great as social media is, it's so good that I think people have, people don't believe you. Like, like they hear you, but they don't really believe you when you say in person networking is still it's still just huge. It's still, it's almost everything. I think like yeah. the most clients I've gotten here in Arizona and I've got the social media, we've got the podcast and all this other stuff is just, I show up, I work with rescues directly. I work with rescues through the foundation. I've got my untamed business. I've got everything else. And just like you, I've always got one to two foster dogs at a time. A lot of them are feral from the, from the reservations around here, you know? <sighs> And, uh, you know, and I, I flip them around, same sort of thing, domesticate them, train them, socialize them, send them out, you know, find owners for them. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. charge a little bit more of the adoption fee to offset for like their training tools and lessons and stuff like that. Um, but that's where I get the majority of my, my like referral base now is, oh yeah, uh, Bodhi's dad. I'm like, oh, no way. How's Chris doing? And, you know, and it's, it's yeah. stuff like that, you know, but I think people really need to believe us when we tell you doing work like this it really, really does work. Go to a rescue, start I mean, somewhere. You got a guy right here who's dude. living proof of it. Like, right. Dude. Well, me too. I, same thing you know, here. I mean, yeah, here. Here's, an, yeah, here's an example. I volunteer with Incredible Stella, mm -hmm. right? I got flown out to Florida mm -hmm. to go help because, I, because they saw my work with Incredible Stella, my volunteer work. They saw it. The mom liked it, told her daughter. They flew me out. That's the, and it like... Mm -hmm. You're like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I was like, how, like, why'd you pick me? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, right. Like, why, like, why wouldn't you be calling Robert Cabral? Why wouldn't yeah, you be yeah, calling yeah, yeah. like Larry Crone or something? Right. Mm -hmm. Why'd you call me? And it's the work that I did. Yeah. In mm -hmm. volunteer, You're impressed. You're impressed right. Them. It's volunteer. Like, I'm not joking. Volunteering made me the trainer I am today. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, you, I mean, you say this on your Instagram, but like, there's, 
you know, so you say that there's no trainer who's put in as much volunteer. No way. No flipping way. Maybe, maybe Robert Cabral. Maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, there are times at my house that I have 13 dogs and they're all rescue dogs. Mm-hmm. And I'm, mm-hmm. my head is about to fly off. Right. And right? That, that in and of itself makes you a specialist. It's, you know it's, I mean? It makes you a it's specialist crazy. In, in this field. And it's like, question I, for you. Yeah. So Brent and I have been hammering down this idea that we, we are looking to implement some point here within the next 60 days. Right. I'm right about that. Would yep, you say? Yep. 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 Now the idea is this, and I want to get your feedback on it. And I want to know, uh, well, can I, want can, to know- can I say one thing real quick? And then you, you, you say that because I think it's going to lead into that. Go ahead. Okay. So in the rescue world, in dog training, working with rescues there, you know, there's kind of, I always look at it like there's like a Trinity that needs to happen in order to really help rescue animals. Okay. Obviously we got adoption, right? adoption is and rescue like actually taking the dogs in but it's saving it's them. not enough though no it's not enough Mental then there's well-being. then there's a spay, a spay and neuter yeah. right spay and neuter is a thing the biggest one that's been missing is the education how do we educate groups of people and t- how do we educate trainers how do we educate because in a realm in a world the rescue world especially that is filled with so much compassion and protection and coddling how is it that we can educate people and make things make sense in a way that's going to be effective? Mental well-being. Right. Do, you know, I don't want to. Dog- and I and I understand that, but I would say even a high percentage of human beings are still suffering with mental well-being, yes. right? And I would say, so so it's an easy answer. What I want to figure out, and what I want to lead into you, Mariano, what you mm-hmm. were going to say was, how do we go about teaching? masses people does it start at the small level does people it start to, at the is it a it, video we make is it a is it a seminar we do what a, is a video is a good idea but the problem is ego in, in the rescue world and the drug training world mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. everyone thinks that their way is the only way mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and that's the problem until and this is this is the sad part about it mm-hmm. is us being balanced trainers yep 90 percent of rescues fucking hate our guts sure right that they hate our guts. Sure. They'll use us on the down low, but they'll never admit it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Until we take out the coddling, and until we take out the human emotion and do what's right for the dog, mm-hmm. nothing's gonna really change. Mm-hmm. We can help a few, a small number of rescues that have an open mind. For instance, repos and rescues out there in Detroit, mm-hmm. solid, tr- solid rescuer, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we, we need, we need to to stop making it a competition. I mean, the, the, and I'm included in this problem. I'm a bigot too, right? Mm-hmm. We're like the dog training world is, is full of bigots, mm-hmm. right? They hate positive only, they hate force free and vice versa. We all do it mm-hmm. and, I, and I am just as guilty of it. I'm trying my hardest not to call people out and make those funny things mm-hmm. that I used to do because it is just making the problem worse. Right, right, right. Right, mm-hmm. just pissing people off. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and we have- it's not gonna help. 